This video describes the Loom Box Test. It was recently added to Stack Graphics 18. The Loom Box Test is used to test for serial correlation in a time series. It's widely used in econometrics to determine whether there is sufficient structure in a time series to make it worth modeling. It's also applied to residuals after a forecast model has been fit in order to determine whether or not there's any remaining structure in the residuals. In order to calculate the Loon box statistic, let's let R sub i be the estimated correlation between time series observations separated by i time periods. The statistic that we calculate is called Q. It involves a weighted sum of the squared autocorrelations at lags 1 through k. In order to determine the statistical significance of Q, it's compared to a chi-square distribution. For a raw time series that hasn't been modeled, the chi-square distribution has k degrees of freedom. After fitting a forecast model to the data, the degrees of freedom is k minus the number of estimated parameters. Small p-values for that Q statistic indicate significant autocorrelation in the time series being analyzed. The Loon box test is an alternative to the box Pierce test used in earlier versions of stack graphics. You can still use the box Pierce test if you wish by going to the preferences dialog box under edit on the main menu. If you select the forecasting tab down near the bottom right, you'll see that you can choose between the two tests. Studies have shown, however, that the Loon box test tends to be the more powerful test in most situations. To demonstrate the Loon box test, I've loaded into the Stack Graphics 18 data sheet monthly data showing the unemployment rate in the United States. There's data for every month beginning in January 2000 going through September 2017. I'll go now to the top menu and select Describe, Time Series, Descriptive Methods. In the data field, I'll put the seasonally adjusted unemployment rate. In the time indices field, I'll put month. The next dialog box allows me to make adjustments such as taking a log or something like that. I'll just press OK. When the list of tables and graphs appear, the analysis summary, time sequence plot, autocorrelation table, and autocorrelation plot are selected by default. I'm also going to want the tests for randomness. You can see a plot of the monthly unemployment rates in the upper right pane. Unemployment has changed quite a bit over the years. It's been as low as 3.8% and as high as slightly over 10%. In recent years, there's been a pretty steady drop in the rate. The bottom right pane shows the estimated autocorrelation function. Each bar represents the estimated autocorrelation at a particular lag. The first bar shows the autocorrelation for observations separated by one month. The second bar is the lag 2 autocorrelation. And then we have autocorrelations with lags of three months, four months, and so forth. Around zero, you see 95% probability limits. These are used to judge whether the autocorrelation at a particular lag 
is significantly different from zero. Any bars beyond the limits indicate statistically significant autocorrelations at that lag. The Lung box test now will be run to judge whether this pattern of autocorrelations indicates significant serial correlation in the data. It's not just an individual lag that's being tested, but a set of K estimated autocorrelations. To see the results of the test, I'll go to the bottom left pane where it shows tests for randomness. This section right here shows the results of the Lung box test. It's been applied to the first 24 autocorrelations. The value of Q is 2810. The p-value is 0. The small p-value here indicates that, in fact, there are significant correlations in that series. Incidentally, you can change the value of K by pressing the right mouse button and selecting pane options. By default, the Lung box test has been applied to the first 24 autocorrelations. If you wanted to change that, for example, to 36, you could. Pressing OK then revises the test statistic. The test results here are not at all surprising. You can see quite clearly in the plot of the time series that there's a lot of serial correlation in the unemployment rates. Where the Lung box test is really interesting is when you're trying to fit a forecast model. I'll go ahead and do that now by selecting forecast from the top menu and choosing automatic model selection. It's remembered the time series I'm working with, so I'll just go ahead and press OK. This shows various options now for picking a forecast model. I'll go ahead and ask it to try random walks, trends, exponential smoothers, and ARIMA models up through second order. I'll also ask it to pick the forecasting method that optimizes the Akaiki information criterion. When I press OK and select the tables and graphs I want to see, it'll go ahead and pick what it thinks is the best forecasting model. And in this case, it turns out to be an ARIMA model of orders autoregressive 1, on the first differences, moving average is second order. You can see from the forecast function that the best estimate of what's likely to happen in the next few months is a continued drop in the unemployment rate. Of course, the 95% limits show quite a bit of uncertainty in that forecast. It could easily turn around and go back up again. We'll now take a look at the autocorrelations of the residuals. The residuals, when we fit a forecasting model, are defined as the one ahead forecast errors. That is the error in trying to estimate what's going to happen next month, sitting at a particular month. Here you see the residual autocorrelations. It does look as if some structure might be left. I see in particular a significant autocorrelation at lag 12 and lag 24. That would tend to suggest that some of the seasonality in the data has not been removed when the unemployment rate was originally seasonally adjusted. To apply the Lung box test, I'll need to go to the list of tables and graphs 
and ask for residual tests for randomness. This is the same output that we saw before. And now you see here the Lung box test. The p value is 0 0.04. That indicates at the 5% significance level, there is still significant autocorrelation in the residuals. I say that because the p-value is less than 0 0.05. Let's see if we can improve our forecast model by putting in some seasonal terms. I'm going to go back to the forecast menu and select automatic model selection. This time I'm going to go to the field labeled seasonality and put in a value of 12. That will instruct the automatic forecasting procedure to try terms at lags 12, 24, 36, and so forth. I'll ask it to fit all sorts of models again. And when it shows me the tables and graphs, I can see I'll ask for residual tests for randomness to get the Lung box test. I'll now press OK. And here's the forecast model it's selected. This forecast model is a little bit more complicated. It's added a second order autoregressive term at lag 12 and also a second order moving average term at lag 12. You can see that the forecast function has a little curvature to it coming from the seasonal terms. You can also see in the autocorrelation function of the residuals that the big lag autocorrelations at 12 and 24 have disappeared. Let's go now and check the Lung box test. The p-value of the test is now 0 0.3. That indicates that there may well not be any remaining structure in the residuals. As you can see, the Lung box test is helpful in determining whether we've selected an adequate forecasting model.